Today we're talking net debt. Net debt is net a, debt. A, a, net it. debt. All right. Uh, one of the things, and, and I, I believe I spoke about this before on on this uh, this segment. It was probably a few months ago. But assets versus liabilities is something that I always look at in a company. And the reason I look at it is because it really paints a picture of you know how effective um, a company is when it comes to basically when it comes to running the business, right? If you've got a company, let me get up the Yahoo Finance here. If you've got a company that has a whole bunch of assets, and if you just think about this logically, a whole bunch of assets and a lot less liabilities, at the end of the day, you can probably say that they're doing pretty well, okay? Now, what that takes into consideration is, you know, if you could liquidate the entire business, and I don't know why my numbers aren't coming up here, Let's try this one more time. Um, if you could liquidate the whole business and still have money left over, that usually tells you that they're doing pretty well, right? Now, the problem with that is, is it's like, yes, it's a good metric. It's one of the metrics I use. It's kind of like a, a must have for a fundamental com company for me. But when you want to start doing a deeper dive, you want to start looking at something called net debt. Okay. Now let me let me give you the definition of net debt, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. All that net debt really is is a measure of financial liquidity of a company. Okay. It basically compares your liquid assets, and this is the key word, liquid assets to total debt. Okay. So at the end of the day, you know, yeah, we could just sell everything, equipment, uh, you know, uh, goodwill, all that. Get rid of all of that. Get rid of all the liabilities, and, and good companies will have money left over. That's, that's a very macro view of this. But when we want to start looking at the inner workings of a company and really to see what, what kind of financial footing they're on, this is where net debt becomes, becomes more, much more important. So again, we're comparing liquid assets. And by liquid assets, we mean stuff that can be gone like that. Like literally, you know, they can, they can liquidate those, those uh, particular assets and, and be able to cover off their debts. And, and we'll talk a little bit about the actual formula for this in a minute. But the question becomes is why does this matter? Well, it's much like the liquidity of options, right? If you're if you're trading options and you get into an illiquid option, okay, it can you can run into a bunch of different problems, right? You get into an illiquid option, uh, you're either going to get wide bid ask spreads that cost you a bunch of money to get in and out, which is not good, right? Add on commissions, or you may run into a scenario that if something goes wrong, you may not be able to get out of that 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 uh, particular position at any price, right? And that's where things get really really hairy. OK, so that's why we don't trade illiquid options. Well, we don't want illiquid companies either for almost a similar reason. So let's say you've got a company that doesn't have a lot of liquid assets. OK, and, and they've got a lot of a lot of total debt there. Right. If they've got it, if they if that, if that debt gets called in and we'll talk about short and long term debt in a minute, if that debt get, gets called in and they don't have a lot of liquid assets, well, then they might have to go and either borrow money which if they have to borrow it and they've got a lot of debt, they're probably going to have to borrow it at a higher rate. Okay. Or they might not get any at all. And then they have to start liquidating some of their other, you know, not so liquid assets. And, and you're, you're probably not getting fair market value if you're forced to do that. So what this can show you is if you get a, you know, an increasing debt load uh, versus the liquid assets over time, then you can start to say, okay, maybe this company is not running as efficiently as it should. Maybe there's some challenges behind the business. One of the best examples uh, really was GE a number of years ago. So GE used to be a darling, used to be a, a rock solid company, good dividend payer, you know, all, all the things that you wanted out of a company. And then they started to get into a bunch of different businesses and those businesses were not running very well, not very efficient. And, and their debt load started to creep up and their liquid assets were low. And, and that actually caused them to cut a dividend, which is also you know, a no-no as far as I'm concerned when it comes to a fundamentally good stock. If you're paying a dividend and you cut it, that usually spells trouble. That's, that's usually a problem. So anyway, so why does this matter? Like I said, we're looking for the liquidity of a company if, if, it's, if you can't get uh, out of your short-term slash long-term debts 
uh, like you said, you could run into all sorts of, uh, of a host of economical problems that really with a fundamental company, we don't want to see those. We want a company that's very efficient at running their business. And, and this is a, a metric like that. So, so net, net debt is just simply uh, short-term debt versus uh, short-term let debt plus long-term debt minus any cash and cash equivalents. Okay. So short-term debts can be just, uh, uh, just current, what we call current debt. So if we start looking at this here, we got to go to the balance sheet. Um, Matt and Mark, can you let me know if you can see my pen here? If I write on this. Can you see that yellow? I just want to make sure the folks sure at home can see it. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Um, I just want to circle some things here so that we can see. So if we, if we start looking at this, uh, it's very hard for me to to do this, but um, if we start looking at the financials, we get to the balance sheet here, you're gonna see a bunch of different things. We have three things we have to deal with here, okay? Cash and equivalents, cash equivalents. Now cash and cash, cash, everybody knows what cash is. Cash equivalents essentially are like marketable securities, T-bills, bank accounts, things like that, okay? So they're very liquid assets. So in this case, Coca-Cola, as about uh, 9.6 billion in cash and cash equivalent. So that is their liquid assets, essentially. That's what we consider to be totally liquid. So now if we start looking at the, the other side of the coin here, now we wanna see what the short-term or the current debts are. Uh, so let's see, where are we here? Current debt, right there. Okay, so now you can see this current debt number right there. So 4.6 billion, okay, they've got current debt. And then if we go further down, we can look at our long-term debt uh, there. So about 38 billion, okay? So if we take our little formula here, we add the 4.6 plus the 38 minus the 9.6, it comes out to about 30, 33 billion, okay? That, uh, that they've got for, for total debt, okay? So now, what does that mean to us? Well, we can compare that to, uh, to another, we can, first of all, we can do two things. We can go assets versus liabilities, which is very easy to do here. Um, you know, Coca-Cola has a ton of assets. Uh, total assets are 94 billion, total liabilities are 69, okay? So there's no problem from that standpoint, but what we could look at is to see, is there, is there um, liquid assets declining or increasing? Is their debt increasing and declining? We can see this trend over time and it can give us a heads up if a company's in bad shape. Now, you probably won't see too much of this in a, in a company like Coca-Cola, pretty strong, but it's always good to kind of look at these things and say, hey, you know, let's let's just pay attention to this to see if something is changing, right? So we look at, uh, we look at this here. So uh, 9 billion, six and a half, 6.8, 9.6. So for the most part here, the cash and the cash equivalents or their liquid assets are, are going up, which is good. Now what we want to see is are there is their debt rising, going down? Well, it was it was pretty big. It dropped off. It dropped off. It's, it's popped up a little bit here. So that's good. The, the current debts are a little bit lower. Now we can look at the long term debt. And so uh, big, bigger, bigger and now starting to drop off. So ideally, we'd like to see this falling a little bit, a uh, little bit more than it is, but you know, it looks like they're starting to get on track. And obviously with uh, you know, 2020, these numbers might be a little bit skewed, but at the end of the day, we want to look at the net debt and we want to, we want to make sure that it's overall, it's not increasing or at least not increasing in a big way. Okay. So we can do that comparison. We can compare that to other companies of a similar nature. You know, we've been doing this the whole time here. So we could go to Pepsi here and see what their numbers look like from a debt standpoint. Let's quickly pull these up. So we look at this here. Uh, so cash equivalents, uh, kind of up and down for them, right? A little bit up and down for their cash, cash equivalents. We'll look at their debts, uh, current debt. Uh, so current debt, yeah, a little bit of rising here, current debt wise, not too bad. And then long-term debt is uh, the other part we want to see here. And so, yeah, up, 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 similar to Coca-Cola. So very similar in this nature. Again, we're not really seeing any big problems with these companies, but when you start looking at other smaller companies that are maybe debt driven, maybe you're looking at a growth company and, and you're trying to figure out if, you know, if they can, uh, you know, if they're going to, if they're going to go from, from being, you know, maybe not making any money to, to being something good in the future. Well, watching their debt versus their assets is always a good way to do that. And net debt can let you basically hone in or zero in on that. So, 
Um, again, all we're using this for is to see if, you know, if the company is on solid financial footing. That's that's really all this is at the end of the day. So net debt is like zeroing in in assets versus liabilities. And, and with that ratio, we're assuming the, you know, that they, again, liquidate the whole company. In this case, all we're talking about is taking what their short-term liquid assets are and how much they can offset their debt. If you start to see a, a trend in the wrong direction of that, that can kind of spell problems for the company itself. It's just think of it as a household, right? If you've got, you know, if you've got lots of assets, liquid assets, where you can pay off all your debts, you're probably on a, on a solid financial footing. Companies are no different in that in that space. So, you know, you could sit here and compare these, uh, you know, two two dissimilar com or similar companies. You could compare this to other companies in the interest industry to see, you know, really how they all shake out, and you could put it into a ratio. But that net debt is very important because, again, it's zeroing into their current uh, ability to to manage the business. Now, one other thing that I will say is looking at the net debt. It, it's it's important for a couple of reasons too. If you had, there, there are companies that will actually, so in this case, Coca-Cola and Pepsi both have, have a negative number for their, their net debt, okay? You're actually going to find that there are some companies out there that have a positive number. So meaning they have more liquid assets than they have debt overall. Now that can be good for two, good and bad for, for both reasons. So it can be good in the fact that you know, yeah, if, if anything economically happens, they're going to be able to weather any storms, you know, pretty easily because they, they have a lot of cash there. But it can also be bad in the fact that, you know, if they've got too many liquid assets and they're not using them efficiently, they could be using that and they could also be using, you know, uh, low interest debt to be growing the business. So you've got that kind of yin and yang there where you want to you want to pay attention to that as well. So you may see a positive number, you may see a negative number. You know, the negative number, as long as it's not increasing exponentially, uh, you're in good shape. Uh, you know, if you see a positive number, again, it might be inefficiencies in the in the business, and that where that way you could do a, a little bit deeper dive into the company. So end of the day, assets versus liabilities, macro view, net debt, you're kind of zeroing in to see really uh the, the health and the financial stability of a company. That Appreciate is your that. fundamental focus. Appreciate you as always, Coach Greg, and all the details on fundamental analysis. It is certainly increasing our IQ from a financial perspective, and I always appreciate that. Final thoughts uh, here, ladies and gents. Let's start with Coach Mark for his final thoughts. Coach Mark? Uh, cash flow Thursday, data Thursday, uh, cash flow Vikings trading lab. I'm going to be continuing my cost. My uh, dialogue on cost average down, I've been talking about the last two weeks. Going to finish up that discussion in today's lab and then cash flow club at 8 30 eastern so a bunch of theta on this thursday theta thursday it is thank you there for that coach mark coach greg final thoughts my friend yeah i think we said it best right at the start here matt uh watch your levels you know watch the support it, it, we, we had the conversation in the bitcoin chart we have the conversation uh in in the levels of support for the commodities as well watch your levels of support and resistance if they're going to break, you need to be you need to be in a position where it's not going to hurt you, uh, or you're going to be in a position where you can take advantage of it. Either way, these are very technical markets to trade. I would still, again, uh, re-emphasize my point from earlier: just be cautious on your position sizing. There's no reason to bet the farm in these kind of markets. They're too wild and too unpredictable. Uh, you can still do as as Mark and I, and I know Matt as well. You know, cash flow cash flow works, and uh, it's it's uh, a little bit safer in these volatile markets. Uh, to be doing some of that. I, I did notice yesterday, and you'll see the IV rank that I have on here yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I probably found half a dozen stocks that had a 100% IV rank, meaning that they were at their highest volatility in the last year. Uh, I was surprised to see that many. Uh, a lot of them I saw in the 90 percentile and the 80 percentile as well. So cash flow kind of works right now. So those are my thoughts for the day. 